It's great to be back in business, huh? Let's bring it on. The big one! The big one! This review is brought to you by Audible. Hello, Grand Theft Auto V. I can say myself, I've been very excited to play this game. Uh, here's a fun fact. This is the first Grand Theft Auto game I've actually reviewed. Uh, back in my earlier time, I didn't have the time to set aside to go through a game of this length. And uh, I was excited just on a personal level to finally uh, offer my own opinion early on about a Grand Theft Auto game. So here it is, Grand Theft Auto V. So what now? <sighs> Looks like I'm gonna have to postpone my retirement. Ferocious. That's the word that kept running through my head for the 60 plus hours I lost myself in Grand Theft Auto V. Ferociously funny, ferociously impressive in technology and design, ferociously determined to outdo the open world game that Grand Theft Auto III loosed upon the gaming landscape 12 years ago. This savage dissemination of Western civilization and its discontents is an unparalleled synthesis of story and player invention in the sandbox of Los Santos and its environs. The game focuses on three main characters, starting with Michael DeSanta, retired criminal who now lives a life of idle luxury with his dysfunctional family and hates every minute of it. Just don't kill him! His wife isn't faithful and his children's ambitions are nominal or worse. Into his life comes Franklin Clinton, a young man from the streets of South Central who is desperate to escape the minimal revenues of street hustling and gang life, but is stuck repossessing cars in an insurance scheme. Come on, man, let's trick this whip, homie. True to the genre, bad decisions are made, and suddenly Michael is back in the world of criminal enterprise with his newfound associate. Lesson number one. Don't ever have kids. Michael and Franklin's efforts get the attention of the last prong of this unsavory trinity, Trevor Phillips. Roger Locke. An old associate of Michael's and one of the greatest characters, not just in video games, but in all of crime fiction. I'll swing by and sign the contracts, all right? Just ignore the bodies. Methed out, <laughs> paranoid of the government, Run! and possessed by violent streaks that would shock Ted Bundy. <laughs> This daringly hysterical character and his strange outbursts of pop philosophy supercharges the events of this massive sprawling epic of ne'er-do-wells, which never lets up for the game's considerably lengthy story. What transpires in the course of the game is best discovered on your own, but how this tale is told is one of the finest examples of video game writing and acting in a year replete with standouts. All against a backdrop of economic, moral, and intellectual apocalypse, Grand Theft Auto V covers materialism, celebrity obsession, millennials, the tea party, electronic surveillance, electronic gadgets, torture and xenophobia, to name only a few topics addressed and it does it with satirical fangs that leave no prisoners as they scorch the earth in the tradition of Bill Hicks, Gary Steingart, and Jonathan Swift. I need to meditate, or masturbate, or both. The Grand Theft Auto games have always conveyed a discomfort or outright distaste with the trappings of contemporary life, but the use of three main characters rather than a single protagonist affords certain narrative benefits, not the least of which is seeing this world through eyes that don't recognize its novelty. If Nico Bellic in GTA 4 is Gulliver, lost in worlds he comments on through his lack of understanding, that role is now assumed by the player as they are dragged through a Babylon well past the point of collapse. Abandoning the main character as a proxy for the player creates an immediacy to the events that is all the more terrifying and affecting. <laughs> Somehow, under the skilled writing of Dan Hauser and his phenomenal team, the game doesn't collapse under the jaundice and cynicism of this tale because this trio of malcontents, amidst their avarice and sociopathy, have a naive desperation for a world of basic decency and rules, a sad fantasy of masculinity in a Southern California envisioned by Bruegel. Have fun, boys. Oh, I'm going. Make sure you don't Don't stay out too late. And what a California it is. Perhaps it isn't the biggest map in a GTA game, but the level of detail and variety is a feat that rivals Skyrim. The city of Los Santos alone is a strangely canny reimagining of landmarks, neighborhoods, and intersections in Los Angeles. The high desert of Blaine County is a blighted landscape where people go to not be found. The mountains are a soft, 
sometimes tranquil locale, and the beaches are a postcard from the edge of the world, and all of it traversable without a load screen in sight. The Grand Theft Auto games have always confronted the challenge of representing a reality that the player is empirically familiar with, making the verisimilitude in GTA V a technological and conceptual achievement of the highest order, and one that may go undernoticed and underappreciated because of the unerring confidence rendered on screen. Well into biking down a mountain did I properly understand that I was biking down a mountain in the middle of the game world. After all those hours, playing the exceptional craftsmanship in the game, it recedes into the overall gestalt. It's unfortunate that with such impressive and detailed landscape on display, the Byzantine row layout will require far too much time focused on that mini-map. Hey, sorry about that. It's what you do in this world that won't escape anyone's attention. About 80 main mission quests and numerous side missions, all of which come across as meticulously crafted to feel meaningful and essential. From assassinations, to yoga, to assisting the paparazzi, to riding with the Minutemen, or engaging in a street battle, nothing feels repetitious or throwaway. By either informing the story with sharp writing, tweaking a gameplay mechanic in a new way, or just designing a sequence with enough surprise, I never found myself fatiguing in GTA V, something that had plagued the previous installments, where you had to eat all your vegetables before you got to dessert. Utilizing the three distinct characters, each with their particular skill set, be it driving, shooting, or aircrafts, allows for more varied missions from the outset, and they only improve from there. That the game controls significantly better than Grand Theft Auto 4 is a large contributor to how satisfying the game is. Driving and driving missions are no longer at the mercy of physics that can turn against you at any moment. The cars aren't magnetized to the road, as in Saints Row or Sleeping Dogs, so there is challenge in a high-speed chase, but I felt far more confident in blaming myself when I encountered failure. Shooting and movement controls have improved as well. There's a weight and a certainty to combat, but it's how these improvements are implemented into level design that affords varied approaches, including stealth, that move the franchise forward in the most necessary way. The ability to switch the three characters of the game is an ingenious gameplay implementation that has useful and dramatic applications throughout Grand Theft Auto V. Everything hurts. When out of mission, you can move freely between the characters, joining them in unpredictable moments. This is decidedly useful when you don't want to drive the distance of the entire map to reach a mission start point. In missions involving more than one of the main characters and at particular times designated by the game, things can get very interesting as you switch back and forth to take advantage of different arsenals, skill sets, and placement on the map. This is not squad-based strategy, but an action game. So when not using a character, the AI performs admirably. Like so much of the game, this unique mechanic could have had a jarring effect on the flow of the action, but instead it performs smoothly and is implemented elegantly. The camera transitions are dramatic, and it's all tied together by the phenomenal original soundtrack, heightening the sensation that you're directing a memorable sequence from a movie. Please don't make me ruin all the great work your plastic surgeons have been doing. Among the most memorable moments in Grand Theft Auto V are the heists that you pull off throughout your time in San Andreas. Multi-tiered and branching, you pick your crew, sacrificing your take in favor of more skillful associates. The better they are, the bigger the cut. Steal and park your getaway vehicle. Coolio, baby! And fulfill other tasks particular to the plan. Once the heist starts, those decisions are put to the test, and at its best, the results are truly thrilling. This money counter that builds as you accumulate your haul and then declines as you escape and potentially lose crew members or duffel bags adds a beautiful tension and absorb me in the moment as few games have and put me on my feet with excitement. I should have paid for a better gunman. While there are several heists, I wanted more, especially where I was granted a lot of freedom in selecting the crew and the getaway vehicle. Many of the sequences, as impressive as they are, are rather deliberate in their structure. The idea of planning out your own criminal event is very enticing, and Grand Theft Auto V falls a little short of delivering on the player invention that it implies in its early hours. This became less of a hang-up as, unlike with the signature moments in Grand Theft Auto IV, these high points aren't as remarkable because the rest of the game 
game that surrounds them is so strong. Oh, hey, chest kiss, homie. Boom. That strong, remarkable content extends well beyond the core and side missions. Grand Theft Auto V is a menagerie of activities. Street races, off-road races, on-water races, golf, tennis, parachuting, darts, crap, and hunting are among the numerous distractions that dot the landscape and benefit the player by developing the stats of the character that partake in them. Looks like someone's gonna have to get a job. The big kicker is, they're actually fun to play in their own right. There are also two stock markets that you can invest in, one affected by in-game events and the other through an aggregation of player behavior via the Rockstar Social Club. It's this level of detail and officious care and implementation that make the game so much greater than what it appears to be at the outset. Then you can rip people off and get paid for it. It's called capitalism. Hmm. In the end, Grand Theft Auto V is a monument to early 21st century popular culture, popular thought, and popular values, all wrapped up in a noxious cavalcade of miscreants, sycophants, and narcissists. Everybody wants everything and only privilege and subterfuge can get you there. I can imagine 200 years from now, like our reading of Dickens, the game will be regarded as a catalog of our contemporary travails, an accelerated reality bearing more truth than just gazing at our own reflection. It's a horror show with primal scream, and despite only having finished wallowing in its delights a few days ago, like the actual Los Angeles I left last year, I'm already starting to miss it. A five. Out of five. Well, I hope you liked the review, and if you did, I encourage you to check out audible.com. Audible.com is the leading provider of downloadable digital audiobooks and spoken word entertainment. Audible has over 100,000 titles to choose from to be downloaded to your iPod, MP3 player, and played back anywhere, anytime. I'd like to recommend two of the books I referenced in the review, Jonathan Swift's classic tale of man's limitations, Gulliver's Travels, and a more recent publication that is one of my favorite books ever, Gary Steingart's Super Sad True Love Story. Go to audiblepodcast.com slash Red3Games to get a free audiobook download of your choice when you sign up today. Again, go to audiblepodcast.com slash Red3Games for your free audiobook. So there you go. Uh, to be honest, I've only touched upon a little of what this game has to offer out of a consideration for spoilers and uh, a need to keep this thing timely within, I don't know, 20 minutes or something like that. I didn't touch on everything. We're doing some other videos, one where I give you some advice about how to approach the game and I chat about the significance of it on Sess or something as well. I encourage you to check it out. But most of all, I encourage you, if you're an adult, to go and enjoy one of the finest games of the year.